Hello and welcome to the next session. Now, today I am going to talk about game of the market and some of the things we have seen in the last session also. I will just briefly go through the last session and then go to the next point called as game of markets. So, game of market, what we say that data science is still a young and a very potential and promising field and new and new markets are to be generated. <coughs> so, many experts state that even if we were suspend a new research work, the integration will take about 10 years to go. So, DL research take a lot of time and I said to last time also, we do not have corporate offices or startup offices with the data science as a one of the department <coughs> because it, invire, it involves a lot of research work it involved a lot of investment, uh, investments. So, last time I was showing this slide, the difference between the startup and the corporation. Okay. So, with this now I go ahead and, and we say that whenever a new technology comes to the market, the game changes or what we call as a change of the game. So, to earn money from your software, you need to solve people problem that is a fundamental principle of our data science. To earn something, you have to solve the human problem or people's problem. Your product need to bring something valuable to the people. If there is no value from your software product, then the people will not be able to use it and they will discard the product or automatically the product will go out of the scope and the market. So, when this value is large enough to sustain a constant demand, you create a new market. So, definitely my entire data science has to create a new market and I will be if I am able to sustain the market constantly on a constant demand, I will be able to create a new market for my data science project. <coughs> this market is ruled by the laws of supply and demand. So, law of supply and demand says that if the demand is more naturally the supply need to be increased or if supply is more the demand has to be increased or something like that a balancing art. So, people and companies will exchange money for your product and services. So, people are looking as a demand is a product as a service and what is the supply? Supply is a solution for their money. So, it is a supply and demand chain on the game of the market. <coughs> In their infancy, big organizations create their own market or took part in the existing one. Market can age and die like we do. So, a new market may come, sustain for some time and automatically it will go away, giving new market somewhere to live. If companies in the dying market do not transition from the emerging, emerging technology or the market, they will be out of the scope, they will cease to exist. So, there is a fundamental principle of data science. So, what is my basic idea of DS? Create new market. So, creating new market is complex and is not easy, it is also risky. If you take too long and use too many resources to test your idea, you are not falling into the data science line. So, you will fail miserably. So, your goal should be create a new market with not too many number of long hours, too many number of resources to test your idea and it should be quick enough otherwise your competitor will going to win. So, the risks are very high. So, testing idea should be quick and easy. This testing allows you to convert mistake into a knowledge. So, this is the fundamental principle of the data science. You have a mistake, learn from the mistake, convert them into a knowledge and convert them into a product form or what we say improve your product iteration after iteration. So, next time I uh, found out some mistake, I learn from the mistake and convert them into a knowledge and I go on improving my product on step by step or iteration by iteration. Failing fast and constantly learning by testing ideas are the key point behind the lean startup methodology. So, since we have a startup company, let us say they will fail but they will quickly recover because they are able to recover and take the mistake into a knowledgeable form and convert the knowledge into a product form. So, a startup company will have a fading fast and but learning also very be rapid. So, formula is simple, pros as many ideas you can. So, this is possible when you have a startup company in a in a uh, established company or in a big business house, this is not possible. So, to formalize simple, 
probe as many ideas as you can, attractively pivot your product to match the market and increase the demand of your services. So, again it is a demand supply and the key characteristic of this is underlying principle called as speed delivery. And if you are able to deliver with the speed of uh, uh, you know maybe theoretically speed of the light which is not possible, but with a very high speed you are ahead of your competitor. So, this is a basic idea. So, big company operate really very quickly, long operational cycle and heavyweight organizational processes come up naturally with the company sale. So, when you have a large big company, this idea will not be a, a fruitful idea without those crucial instrument the company may fail to operate. So, nonetheless innovation do not tolerate long cycles. So, if you have a very long cycle for your product, naturally your innovative ideas very good, but it is not profitable, it is not coming into the existence of the market. So, the cost of failure increases with the time span of the experiment. So, you can see that underlying principle is your failure and time everything is costing money which makes innovation extremely costly for large business solutions. So, that is one of the reason why large big corporation officers do not want to go for a new uh, innovative idea. For organization data science is still an innovation and most market niches have not been developed or discovered yet. While innovations are hard, they are not impossible, they are hard because you have to sustain the market, but however you have to give a chance for a innovative ideas to be making a profit. So, how do I make my innovation management? So, innovation management are chaotic in nature. So, chaotic in nature in the sense that sometime I may fail, sometime I may lose, sometime I may be win. Innovation call for experimentation, but they can not predict the end result and struggle to define the deadline. So, this is a big problem in our data science like a software engineering I cannot define a deadline. So, these qualities of innovations make them hard to implement as a business environment where the clearly defined goal, strict deadline and finite budget are the norms. So, for a corporate office I have strict deadlines to meet. I have clear defined goals available okay, and then I have a finite money allocation, budget allocation to be done uh, uh, already been done. However, this is nevertheless possible in case of a innovation management. So, we say that innovation management provide a set of techniques that bring order in a chaotic ream of innovations. So, basic idea is you may have a chaoticness, okay, no problem, but unless until you provide a innovative idea, it will not come into the order form. So, the word management associated with the direct control and but it is not a innovation at all, okay, is, uh, but this is not the case of innovation. Freedom is critical for any innovation. So, freedom, whenever we have a new idea, the freedom has to be given. Okay. Otherwise, people will not be able to you know uh, give new new ideas and make a innovative product. Okay. So, you do not get a positive result, but just trying a micro management. Okay. Innovation management is about providing support and integration innovation into existing business that can deliver a or uh, deliver a helpful results. So, this is what about the innovation management. Now, let me talk about two beautiful things about the innovation. First one is called as disruptive innovation second is called as sustaining innovation. A word called as disruptive innovation, whenever a innovative idea comes into market, whenever a new product is being released from the company, it will try to generate a new market and disturb the old market. So, what is meaning by disruptive innovation? They are what most people understand by the word innovation. They, this type of innovation brings drastic changes to the market. For example, I have a Nokia mobile, after that so many new mobiles have come and each mobile has more number of features. So, naturally when I introduce a innovation, the old market goes away automatically and the it will generate a new market. Now, you have beautiful uh, uh, iPhone available, beautiful uh, products which are available based upon the technology. So, it introduces something that is new and technological mature enough to create a new market. So, mobile market has created a lot of thunder in the whole world because of this. iPod, iPhone, personal computer, electric light bulb, they are all the disruptive innovations. So, without that we could have not been living together. Okay. Sustaining innovation, the second part of innovation is sustain. Will I be able to sustain over a longer period of time? 
answer should be yes and if it is yes then I will be able to capture the market. So, sustaining innovations feel more organic and incremental. A new version of your favorite operating system for example, we have uh, window 11 now tomorrow Microsoft releases window 12 or 13 or 14 or maybe a higher version. So, they will have a better user interface changes to the social network, they will have a better iPhone upgrade and then sustaining innovation. So, naturally I have to have a very good idea about sustaining the innovation too. So, the goal of sustaining innovation is to keep up with the competitors ahead by introducing new features that will keep you or keep your customer from buying a more attractive feature from the others. Okay. So, this is what we call as a innovation. <coughs> So, the goal of sustaining innovation to keep the competitors by introducing new features that will keep your customer from buying into a more attractive offer from your rivalry companies. So, naturally people are looking for a Microsoft window new version, new version and things like that or people are looking for a new iPhone coming from the uh, big I, uh, iPhone companies are from maybe some Apple new uh, phone, uh, Apple new product is being released. <coughs> So, each sustaining innovation increases the gap between competitors slightly while disruptive innovation changes the way we live and work. So, there will be always a vertical gap generated because of the disruption and disruption will be like a, a old system is also working and the new system is also working. Okay. So, from a layman observation point of view or perspective, disruptive innovations may appear all of a sudden, but in reality they are not a flash of the light. Innovator dilemma contain a many example of disrupting innovation that grew in a small market where features of innovative product were more appealing for very specific use cases. So, so entire uh, iPhone are a disruptive innovation. A stable source of income allows innovative innovation to grow to its potential while companies that provide a old generation product do not see the direct competition. So, a car manufacturing now car also have given a lot of innovation in the uh, automobile sector. Okay. Data science is not disruptive, however, does not does it sustain innovation by itself. It is a set of tools that can be used to create both kinds of innovation. So, I have a disruptive innovation, I have a sustaining innovation. In particular, self-driving cars are a good candidate for a disruptive innovation. However, they are not realizable because uh, people are, uh, are not ready to you know uh, use a driverless car okay. and it has to go and so many number of testing on the road. While more accurate recommendation engines become to sustaining innovation side of the innovation management. So, in terms of risk, creating a disruptive innovation is a perilous and long term investment, while creating a sustaining innovation should be a stable and well researched process for a successful business. So, this is what we have a difference between the two. And if I want a life cycle of the disruptive innovation or any kind of innovation, I have search build, scale, expand and sustain. So, let us see a, a diagram here and this is the diagram where all the things go. So, I have to start from the search. Whenever I have a innovative idea, I will start with the experiment. So, ideas to be experiments. So, I will search for the ideas to be experimented. So, I will go on searching new, new algorithm, new, new ideas and go on doing this job. Okay. After search is over, I am happy with that, then I have built a prototype. So, prototype conduct experiment and measure the result. So, I built a prototype. So, after search, I have the next phase is equal to build. Under build, I have a prototype to be generated. I have, I have conducted lot of experiment and I have uh, measured lot of results and results are very good, they are informative and I can go ahead. Once I have built all, then I go for a scaling prototype are transformed to a modi, uh, 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 what you call as a market ready product. So, this is what the scale. So, sometime I may uh, produce 1000 number of products, sometime maybe 1 million product and things like that. So, from a build stage, I go to the scaling stage and start generating the income. So, you can see here during search and build, there is no income generation. Income generation start from the scaling. Okay. Then, I have to expand, expand the product market to keep the growth rate. So, here again monetary benefit, I go on expanding the market and from the market 
okay you have to sustain so transform the pro market product okay and get generate a, a complete income so from here if the product is very good or something uh, as the feedback comes as a negative feedback or whatever feedback is i can go from a sustaining to a uh, stage where i have to re search about the search so sustain stage actually is a flag signaling company to resume the search so i have a red line indication going from my sustaining to the search so these are the uh, five phases of our innovation <coughs> and you can see that there is a beautiful diagram here which says that <coughs> innovation ideas so early market and mainstream market a early market innovations are slowly happening and then early adopters so people are adopting the technology and there is a cause cause means a gap between the early market and mainstream market so there is a vertical gap or a artificial gap generated by the market or a disruptive technology so there is a early adopters of the technology and there are early majority of the people who are in the mainstream and then they will try to use it so slowly and slowly my user database goes on increasing and then i become a laggard so this way there is a chasm uh, which is nothing but a vertical divide or a, a slit between the early market and the mainstream market so we have a new technology can quickly find a seemingly stable source of income okay in the early market that comprises companies who are willing to pay money for number 1 risk number 2 untested and number 3 experiment and promising solution so i have here a early market a disruptive technology a innovative technology coming through and once the technology become a market value a mainstream market this child, uh, this cosmos will become smaller and smaller it will uh, naturally uh, shrink okay so many organization think that transition from the early market to mainstream market will be smooth and the early market will produce enough income so that it can increase new features and that will be valuable for the stream market however this is not the case in practice and that is what we call the gap between early and mainstream market is much larger than the seems to be when the early market saturate the company enters into a chasm state and the offering is not mature develop to enough the uh, to go into the mainstream market so where customers are used for a feature rich and stable product so naturally all the companies are here which are uh, what you call big companies here so the company is forced to live with a diminished income stream where its product require a large investment though that it can create a feature that are requested by the mainstream market so this with this i stop here and this I, this gives you a beautiful bird view about the early market mainstream market about the disruptive technology about the sustaining sustaining the disruptive innovation thank you